वेलकम टू टॉकिंग स्ट्रेट आई एम सुरेश कोचाटल राष्ट्रीय स्वयं सेवक सरसंचालक डॉक्टर मोहन जी भगवत सीम्स टू हैव फ्रेज द हैकल्स ऑफ ब्रिंदा कराट एंड असदुद्दीन ओवैसी एंड दे आर प्रेडिक्टेबली अपसेट द आर एस एस चीफ हैड इन अ रिसेंट रिमार्क्स इन द इंटरव्यू दे आर गिवन टू ऑर्गेनाइजर एंड पंचजन्य हैड एक्चुअली गॉट सम ऑफ दिस यूजल सस्पेक्ट्स इन अ ट्विस्ट एज दे वर एंग्री विथ हिम फॉर आस्किंग मुस्लिम्स ऑफ इंडिया टू अबैंडन द रेटोरिक्स ऑफ सुप्रीमेसी well one has to see the interview in totality to understand what sarsang chalak had said from cpm leader brinda kara to ai mim chief asaduddin owaisi a raft of opposition leaders objected to mohan bhagwat ji comments in the latest interview where he affirmed that the muslims are nothing to fear in india and advised them to jettison their bustarious rhetoric on supremacy which often we see on various forums like television debates cpm leader brinda kara attacked mohan ji bhagwat saying his statement was highly objectionable anti constitution and provocative one wonders what brinda karat found provocative in that or anti constitution for that matter the rss chief statement is objectionable and provocative i wonder what brinda karat found that be objectionable she also said that the court should take a so motor notice of a statement as if the courts have nothing else to do Of course Brinda Karat will not remember any such statements made by her own party in Kerala or by their alliance partners there. She only wakes up when BJP or RSS says something. To quote, it seems Bhagwat ji will prepare and decide the criteria for living in India according to her. Bhagwat ji and his Hindutva brigade should read the constitution especially articles 14 and 15 among others. Every citizen has its equal rights in this country so says Brinda Karat. perfect madam we appreciate that definitely now come to mr ovc also he also has many things to say he says should mohan ji bhagwat decide how should we behave definitely he talks about golwalkar and if muslims want to live in india they will have to remain subordinate nobody said this the present rss chief wants to impose his understanding and thinking even today according to brinda karat where did he say that madam did he say that anywhere the fact that mr bhagwat bell the cat and confronted the harsh truth without quoting his in politically correct terminology seemed to have raised the hackles of even ai mim chief asaduddin owaisi who went on a long tirade against the rss supremo for asking muslims to relinquish the maximalist beliefs he even asked who is mohan bhagwat to give muslims permission to live in india and follow our faith according to mr owaisi we are indians because allah willed it how dare mr mohan ji pagwat put conditions on our citizenship we are not here to adjust our faith or please a bunch of people in nagpur well mr ovc the same thing can be said about you and your party and your religion and how do you feel it that's a question i want to ask you the bjp leaders had used similar language that ovc uses to talk about a party which is of razaka's vintage who are responsible for the massacre of hindus in hyderabad before hyderabad was liberated and is today called aimim what would mr ovc want to say on that okay according to mr ovc also this fact comes in he says mr mohan ji bhagwat said there is no external threat to india and according to him all the sanghis have been whining over the bogey of internal enemies and state of war for decades mr ovc did you see the interview in full did you see the context of the interview definitely all this could think of chori for china and senozari for fellow citizens i mean forget it come on get real mr ovc if you are indeed at war according to him a swayam sevak sarkar has been sleeping for 8 years well 8 years india hasn't lost anything mr ovc you should ask the congress people about how much land they lost to china the 38000 square kilometers which they lost to china in 1962 rss ideology he says is a threat to india's future oh my god What about AIMIM, Mr. Ovesi? The sooner Indians recognize the real internal enemies, the better it would be. No decent society can tolerate such hatred and radicalism in the name of religion. Look who is talking, Mr. Asaduddin Ovesi is talking about radicalization in the name of religion. Just look at the mirror, Mr. Ovesi, in the morning, and you will get the answer for it. Who is Mr. Mohanji Bhagwat fighting as a representative for the Hindus? Who is he, according to Mr. Ovesi? Well, Mr. Ovesi. Mr Mohan ji Bhagwat is the sarsang chalak of the Rashtriya Swayamsevak Sangh in case you didn't know it welcome aboard i'm giving you this news please look at it google it and you will get it 
According to Mr. Oweisi, there are many other things to be spoken about. He said there are enough Hindus who feel mysterious about the rhetoric and supremacy of RSS. Leave alone how the minority feels. Who told you this, Mr. Oweisi? Did you go and do a survey somewhere? I fail to understand how you can speak for the Hindus. Speak for your community. Doesn't matter. Don't speak for Hindus. Please leave us alone. We know what we want. You can't say Vasudeva Kutumbakam says, Mr. Ovesi, for the world if you are busy building your building, building divides in your own country. Vasudeva Kutumbakam and we saw what the Mughals did in our country. Okay, We saw what Tipu Sultan did in our, down south. We saw what happened to Hampi who destroyed it. Vasudeva Kutumbakam. Mr. Ovesi, you should know the meaning of it first. And he even goes to ask Mr. Ovesi, so why does the PM hug all the Muslim leaders in other countries like Saudi Arabia, UAE and other where it goes, but he never hugs a single Muslim in his country. He will, Mr. Ovesi, hug you if you speak the language which we all want you to speak. The problem is you are addressing your community all the time. You are only dividing people. You are the person dividing everyone, Mr. Ovesi, not Sir Sanchalak. Please understand that. Okay, we also have Kapil Sipil, the Congress MP. Of course, he is not a Congress MP, technically speaking. He is not with the Congress anymore. We also weighed in on his opinions about Bhagwaji's remarks, concurring with his Hindustan should remain Hindustan. Are Pakistan calls India as Hindustan. They have no issues. Why do you have issues, Mr. Sibyl? That is what I failed to understand. This is it. Now, let us look at what actually RSS chief said about Muslims in the belief in the religious supremacies. Well, opposition leaders have been ranting and raving over the comments made by Mohanji Bhagwat. It is worth dwelling what the RSS Sarsan Chalak actually said in his interview with the organizer and the Panchajanya. He spoke about from the challenges facing the Sangh to its intricate relationship with politics. A newfound assertiveness amongst Hindus, which was but natural, the issues plaguing the young generation in the country, the socio-political transformation primarily driven by technology and modernization, the population policy and of course, definitely the population imbalance. He said the Hindus must bear in mind that belongingness they feel for the country is because of their numerical superiority. That is perfectly right. Expanding on the population imbalance issue, the Sarsan Charak said that if it has been a global problem caused by aggressive nature of people and civilizations. You can guess what he is talking about. Only the Hindu society stands apart, showing no aggression whatsoever in the interest of pacifism, non-violence, democracy and secularism. We never went around invading other countries. We never went on destroying other religious structures before, the, like the Mughal state. The preservation of those who are not aggressive, essential, he said. Sir Sanchalak said this, emphasizing the salience of preserving the Hindu majority in the country in the face of aggressive civilizations striving for homogeneity. Nothing wrong with it. We are a Hindu nation, we are a Hindu Rashtra, and we are proud of it. There is nothing wrong with this. That is why Pakistan calls us Hindustan. Mr. Ovesi, do you understand that? Hindus, according to Sarsan Chalak, is our identity. Hindu is our identity, our nationality, and our civilizational trait. A trait that considered everyone as ours. Now, do you get Vasudeva Kutumbakam, Mr. Ovesi? We never say, Mine is only true and yours is false. You would say that, isn't it, five times a day? That the only God is yours. Others are not gods. We don't say that. We have got huge pantheon of gods. And we also joke at those same gods. We laugh at them. We pray with them. We do everything. For as a tree is a god, a mountain is a god, and even an idol is a god. A murti as we call it. You are right at your own place. I am right at mine. Why fight according to the Sarsan Chalak? Let us move together. This is Hindutva. As long as the adherent of this value stays in the majority, Bharat remains united, said the Sarsan Chalak. He also stressed why preserving the Hindu society is important. The united Bharat, according to the Sarsan Chalak, provides unity and strength to the entire world. And we have seen that not now, but generations before. It is not, about, not just about Bharat but concerns about the welfare of humanity at large. We saw when we had to give vaccines to the entire countries around us during the COVID pandemic. We did that. We helped everyone. Imagine for a moment the consequences of Hindu society was to disappear. We are one of the oldest civilizations in history. I am the oldest if you ask me. Other races will start a war for supremacy, said the Sarsan Chalak. This is inevitable. 
then what is a guarantee to save us from this volatile possibility is the presence of Hindus. Simple truth is this, Hindustan should remain Hindustan. There is no harm in Muslims living in today's Bharat or for the better any other community living in today's Bharat. If they wish to stick to their faith, they can and they should. If they want to return to India to the faith of their ancestors, they may. It is their entirely their choice. That's what Sarsang Chalak said. There is no such stubbornness among Hindus. Islam has nothing to fear according to the Sarsang Chalak. But at the same time, Muslims must abandon their bosterous rhetoric of supremacy. Bhagavad Ji said, warning how supremacy could form in chaos and inter-religious clashes. Sir Shankar has also accentuated the need to abandon a narrative that promotes uniformity and demonizes diversity. We are an exalted race. We once ruled over this land and shall rule again. This is what Mr. Ovesi and his, his ilk says. Our only path is right, rest everyone is wrong. We are different, therefore we will continue to be. The way we dress, the way we go about, everything is different. We are different. We won't like the rest of the people around. They must abandon this narrative according to Sarsan Chalak. The Muslim, the Muslim leaders need to abandon that rhetoric. And those who live here, whether a Hindu, a communist, or Muslim, a Christian, must give up to this logic. There is more actually in that interview and you can actually watch it on any of the YouTube channels. You can go there and Google it the Panchajanya and organizer interview with Sarsan Chalak Mohanji Bhagwat. Watch it and you will get more logic, better than what Brinda Karat and even Asaduddin Ovesi have to say. They have to talk politics, they have nothing else to talk. But what Sarsan Chalak said made a lot of sense. Thank you for watching. Jai Hind.